What's up guys? My name is Jacob. I'm a third year medical student at St. George's University. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about term five at SGU and giving you a breakdown of what that term looks like. So you made it ter through term four and you're on to term five. This is gonna be the last term before you start clinical rotations. Super exciting. Um, it's a challenging term, but you know, you're almost there. So that's really, really cool. Basically, you're gonna have four modules similar to previous terms. Um, you're gonna start out with MNI, which is muscular, nervous system, and infections. And this is really a continuation of term four. It's basically the second spiral of your information there. So it's basically, they, they say, that it's the last module of new information. Now, what's kind of unique about this module is that the test is only worth 72 points. So this is really interesting because the MNI module exam is 72 points and then your exams two, three, and four are worth 240. So it is very disproportionate, but what that means is if you have, if you struggle, on that first exam, you can definitely make it up in the uh, later exams. There's a lot of points to do that. Also, there's gonna be a lot of items in the gradebook. Not all of them are a significant amount of points. Obviously, tests are weighted the most, but you do have several um, participation points. You're also going to have um, two patient care assignments. You're gonna have a case presentation, and also you're gonna have like three um, OSCEs, which are the clinical um, exam uh, evaluations. And uh, so there is quite a few points that are available. I think it's the most of any term, if I remember correctly. But um, MNI, you're gonna start with that module. And basically, like I said, it's gonna be um, muscles, nerves, and infections. So you're gonna, it's gonna be a lot of antibiotics. Um, you're kind of gonna, gonna go over the microbio um, information again. I would just encourage you to, you know, know the antibiotics really well because that'll serve you um, not only for the exam, but you're also gonna need that for step one. And then in your clinical rotations, you're gonna use antibiotics all the time. So it's very important to know those. And uh, when you're learning it, it can be real tedious, but if you just sit down, learn it, make flashcards on it, whatever it is, whatever you do, um, that will serve you really well in the future. So the second module is CPRH. So it's gonna be cardiology, pulmonary, renal, and hematology. So this is just gonna be another spiral through um, the CPR stuff and um, it's basically their four week module. So you do a week of cards, a week of poem, week of renal, and then a week of uh, hematology. And again, it's uh, the exam is worth 240 points. So it's quite a bit. And um, the, the lectures are a little bit different in, in the, the later three modules. What I concentrated on was, I still studied the lectures and I didn't just completely disregard them, but I really focused on doing questions, which I'll hit on question banks here at the end. But you have to kind of change in that second, third, and fourth module um, how you do things because the lectures aren't as helpful. So then the third module is gonna be GOER. So it's gastroenterology, obstetrics, endocrine, and reproductive. Again, just another spiral. Again, I would just do a lot of questions and try to stay up on Anki and flashcards if you do that. That served me really well. And then the fourth module is gonna be DNPR, dermatology, neurology, um, psychiatry, and rheumatology, which is honestly just like a hodgepodge of random things um, kind of at the end for your last module. I think that um, there is a lot of like muscular disorders in the rheumatology. It's really important to learn all of the different uh, antibodies, the p -ancas, c -ancas, um, and like the, the antihistone for drug-induced SLE. There's just a lot of buzzwords there, so just kind of go over those, make sure you know those. So basically for term five, there's gonna be two 
courses. One of them is only like three or four credits and the other one's like 17 credits. So the 17 credit course has those four modules that I just talked about. That's gonna be like your normal term. That is Principles of Clinical Medicine 2, PCM 2. And you're gonna have a lot of the same um, things. You're gonna have small group. That's what your OSCE is gonna go into. That's what all the participation points will go into. Also in term five, you're gonna have a four credit course, I believe, that's called, called Basic Sciences, Foundations, and Clinical Reasoning. And what this course consists of is a exam that's the your final cumulative exam that can be over two years worth of information. And that's the only grade that's that counts into those four credits. But then you also have some small groups participation points that go into that but aren't really counted in the grade, if that makes sense. So to prepare for that BSFCR exam, I would not recommend to study all two years worth of information. That can be really tedious. That can be a lot of work and you probably wouldn't even get through it. I would recommend just trying to do well on the PCM2 course. If you focus on doing well for that, and if you have done well through your other exams, I think you'll be fine for that. It is, it is very overwhelming, but they, they do have a heavy curve on that exam. I think that the average is around 60 to 65. So they curve that up at least 20 or 30 points. And um, if there's a spot that you know that you struggle with, I would definitely review that because you get around, I think a week um, to prepare for it. So you can definitely look over any weak spots, do old questions, possibly do some old IMCQs. Another aspect that's um, new in term five is going to be hospital visits and clinic visits. So it's a uh, really cool preparation for um, your clinical rotations in term five. Um, SGU will have you go out to different clinics and then the hospital on different services and um, they will have you do your rotations there with uh, physicians, which is really cool. I don't know at this point if they're all back to in-person. As of uh, spring 2022, when I was in term five, there was some in-person and some online just due to COVID restrictions and things like that. But it is really cool. You basically will um, dress up in business casual with your white coat, with your PD kit, and you'll get on an SGU bus and they'll bus you to the general hospital there in Grenada. And you get some really cool experience and it just prepares you a little bit for your clinical rotations. So as far as question banks go, this is another new thing in term five. And basically what will happen is after your first exam, SGU will start to send you emails with login information for question banks they give you. So the question banks that SGU gives you are UWorld, PassTest, and USMLE RX. So what I did when I was in term five is for each system that we did, for, this is for terms, sorry, this is for modules two, three, and four. I would go and do all of the relevant questions in past test and also USMLE RX. For, so for example, when we were in the CPRH module for cardiology, that week block that we did for cardiology, I would go and break it up and do all the questions for USMLE, RX, and pass test just to prepare for that exam. And that served me pretty well. I think it worked out pretty good. I didn't do any UWorld because I just wanted to um, save that for step one. And by the way, I'll cover step one in another video where I can like talk about dedicated, talk about resources I use. But I've, I basically just used USMLE RX and pass test to prepare for modules two, three, and four. I worked really well. Um, I would definitely recommend that. And a lot of times, honestly, a lot of students will do questions during lecture um, just because it's just uh, information that we've already learned. So it's just a recap. Um, so a lot of students will do that. 
I usually try to pay attention, but sometimes I do flashcards, sometimes I do questions. SGU does still give you some practice questions in Sakai, and obviously always do those, um, but they're not as many, and for term five specifically, you'll want to be like hammering out a lot of practice questions. So that's why it's good to really use the pass test in USMLE RX. They do give you quizzes to complete for each like week on USMLE RX. So you can do those and then maybe go back and do any unused questions for that week of content that you're on. But other than that, I do use the fries and Red Bull. Um, I think now it's called like Firehouse Med Prep. Um, that page has a lot of good schedules. I always use those. They have a schedule for term five that helps you get through the um, uh, first aid. It, match it basically matches up first aid and boards and beyond video. So I did go through all those boards and beyond videos and notated first aid like that um, schedule talks about. I did go through some pathoma. I would mix that in when I was uh, having trouble with concepts. Obviously, Anki continued to do that. And then as far as the patient care assignments, those are not too big of a deal, only about seven points. So don't stress over those. The case presentation, also real simple. You just present a case to a small group. Um, it's not worth too many points, so I wouldn't stress about that. You know, obviously you wanna try your best, but I wouldn't stress about that. And then I think your OSCE exams, they kind of like build in um, intensity. So you start out at maybe like eight points and it goes to like 18. And then I think the last one, your final, is about um, 36 points. So again, you know, just do your best on those. They're not probably gonna make or break your grade. Um, and there can be some variation in scoring depending on your facilitator and your standardized patient, but that's just part of the game. So uh, I just don't stress about those too much. Another thing I would keep a close eye on is your small groups for the BSFCR, which is that four credit course in term five that is participation only, but you have to participate in at least 80% to uh, get credit for the course and there's only 10 of those small groups so basically what that means is um, if it's the same as it was for me um, in spring of 2022 you can only miss two of those BSFCR small groups um, or else you don't get credit you you don't get credit for the BSFCR course so I would just keep an eye on that make sure you're attending at least eight out of the ten and um, if, if you do, for some reason, fail that BSFCR exam, that's your last exam that's over the two years worth of material, they do offer a makeup exam and like a remediation course where you would, um, you would study over the summer and then I believe you'd take it in July. That is gonna be required before you take step. So basically, it's kind of a last hurdle before you take step one, is you know, you're gonna have to finish PCM2, those four exams and that course, and then you're also gonna have to um, pass BSFCR, which is the one exam, the, BS, the BSCE2, that's your final exam at SGU, um, and you have to pass that before you're able to register and take step one. I hope this video was helpful to you if you're heading into term five. Be sure to comment below if you have any questions, I'll try to get to those. Comment below if you have any other content ideas or, or videos that you would like to see here. Um, but good luck to you as you head into term five and head into step. And uh, we'd love it if you would uh, like and subscribe below. Take care.